Welcome back to beyoungministry.blogspot.com to another blog and another podcast. Today we're in Luke chapter 22 verses 39 through 46 which reads, Jesus went out as usual to the Mount of Olives and his disciples followed him. On reaching the place he said to them, pray that you will not fall into temptation. He withdrew about a stone's throw beyond them, knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. An angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him, and being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. When he rose from prayer and went back to the disciples, he found them asleep, exhausted from sorrow. Why are you sleeping, he asked them. Get up and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. That's Luke chapter 22, verses 39 through 46. The Lord Jesus truly has our best interest at heart. In the middle of one of the biggest struggles for him, he is most concerned about his disciples. This is what motivated him to come to earth in the first place, the need of mankind for a savior. Human history began in the Garden of Eden, and so did human sin. According to Revelation 21, for the redeemed... The whole story will climax in a garden where there will be no sin. Between the garden where man failed Mm -hmm. and the garden where there will be no sin, we come to the garden where the Lord Jesus accepted the cup of God's wrath on our behalf. By now, in this narrative, it was probably early Friday morning. And the Lord Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane, which is on the Mount of Olives. Gethsemane, interestingly, means olive press. The first Adam rebelled against God in the Garden of Eden and brought sin and death into the world. And the last Adam submitted to God in the Garden of Gethsemane. and brought life and salvation for all who will believe. Before going into the garden, the Lord Jesus gave his disciples the weapon against temptation, prayer. According to Mark 14, eight of his disciples stayed at the entrance to the garden. Three of them, Peter, James, and John, went into the garden with him a little further, but only the Lord Jesus went all the way in alone, a sign that only he could accomplish the impossible for humans. In verse 40, we read, pray that you will not fall into temptation, to pray that we will not be piledrived by temptation is the answer. Though we have been forgiven and though we have been made new in Christ, we're like Lazarus. We came out of the grave And even though we have new life, we still stink. We have our dirty grave clothes on. We are citizens of heaven trapped in unredeemed bodies. And we are seduced by the the remnants of our fallenness. The temptation is to hold on to sin and not invest in God's kingdom. The power of evil is still strong in the believer in Christ, even though we have been born again and the Holy Spirit dwells within. We struggle because sin still dwells within us. Our battle is to fight against our natural attraction to sin, to fight against God. The answer is to fight against our fallenness and to kill it 
and to embrace him. Paul tells us in Romans that we are to mortify the flesh. The word mortify means murder. <laughs> mortify it daily. Why daily? Because it's with us even though we kill it. Even though we say no to it. Even though we deprive it of nutrition sometimes. <laughs> it still lives. The Lord Jesus struggled with temptation in exactly the opposite way as you and I do. He struggled because he was and is holy. We struggle because we aren't holy. We struggle with the flesh, the lust of the flesh. We struggle with the lust of eyes, of the eyes, and we struggle with the pride of life. He struggled against three impulses. Those three impulses were holy, holy, holy. Whereas we try to abandon sin and embrace holiness, in the garden, the Lord Jesus was being tempted to not embrace being the sin bearer. In verse 42, we read, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. It's striking to me that it was not the Father's will. It was not the Father's will that mankind would take the cup of his wrath because, of, of course, we couldn't. There will always be a certain agony in legitimate prayer. The only way we can overcome the flesh is by yielding ourselves to the will of the Father. In this side of heaven, we don't do that consistently. In the Old Testament, the cup was associated with the judgment of God. This is the cup the Lord Jesus had in mind, the cup of suffering, agony, pain, and wrath. He did not do this for himself. He did it for you and me. In verse 43, we read, an angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. There were only two times in the life of the Lord Jesus when angels showed up to directly help him. The first time was during his temptation in the wilderness. The second was during his temptation in the Garden of Gethsemane. In both cases, the angel affirmed the Lord Jesus reminding him that his father was totally committed to him. In verse 44, we read, And being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. The agony the Lord Jesus experienced in Gethsemane describes combat unto death. The medical term, Dr. Luke used here describes the stretching of muscles to the max of, the, of their capability. His anguish expressed itself in tremendous sweating. It was the spring of the year, thus it was not very hot. Yet he sweat profusely, as if he were bleeding. In verse 45, we read, When he arose from prayer and went back to the disciples, he found them asleep, exhausted from sorrow. His agony escalated. He agonized in prayer and then went back to find the disciples asleep. Then he goes back and continues and goes through that process until finally his agony is over. The sleepiness of the disciples was undoubtedly a reminder to him that they, or we, could not endure the cross like he. Satan had given his best shot. He tried to divert the Lord Jesus from the will of God, but the Lord Jesus prevailed. And I might add, God used the sleepiness how easily it was for the disciples to fall into temptation to sleep 
to convince the Lord Jesus of the must, that he must go to the cross on behalf of man. The disciples yielded to temptation because they could not endure in prayer. In addition, they were exhausted by the sorrow of the news. It finally sunk in what was about to happen, and they struggled. It was after this that the Lord Jesus set out to go to the cross, where he crushed the head of the serpent. At his cross, he did what we could never do. He was made sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. My friends, I trust this podcast and this blog are useful to you in your walk with the Lord. If I could be of further assistance to you, shoot me an email at beyoungministry at gmail.com. Hey, have a great day.